Today is Tuesday, excuse me, today is Friday the 12th of July. Welcome to our morning devotion. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. The Lord has gathered us in the true faith. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hand. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Ephesians 4, verse 14. So that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes. Extensive knowledge is not a prerequisite for salvation. Whoever knows that as a sinner he is in need of grace and believes in Christ as his Savior, has knowledge enough to be saved. The child who knows no more than that he is sinful, and that Jesus, thy blood and righteousness, my beauty are, my glorious dress, stands in a saving faith as great as that of any other Christian. One who comprehends only the basics of the divine word can stand in a faith that conquers the world, and be God's dearest child, while one who has a great knowledge remains without faith and a child of hell. Knowledge puffs up, but faith alone saves. We would be greatly mistaken, however, if we concluded from this that a thorough knowledge of the truth is unnecessary. When a person comes to faith, there is always the danger that he could lose both soul and salvation. Next to God's preserving grace, a thorough knowledge of the truth is the only certain means of avoiding the danger of deception by false teachers. Woe to those whose Christianity consists in nothing more than, a habitu than habitually going to church and other religious exercises or in experiencing a sense of excitement and a lasting interest in religion without securing a clear knowledge of the right doctrine. Our text tells us that these are children who are tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes. Every appearance of wisdom, holiness, love, and works that a sect may offer, combined with the splendor of its temple, and the glamour and fervor of its worship can make an almost irresistible impression upon souls that are lacking a thorough knowledge. When they are seized by a deceiver, they may think that the true light has risen in them, when in fact the small light that had already been burning in them has now been extinguished. They think they have discovered the truth, but they have only lost what little knowledge of the truth they possessed. They think they have experienced the miracle of true regeneration, but the weak life of faith that was in them has in an instant been stolen from their heart. They think they now stand on the firm ground of salvation, while the deceiver has really placed them unnoticed on slippery ground. Their supposed new truths are only old errors and their supposed better faith is the empty imagination of their deceived hearts. 
here we see the frightening result of, a, of the lack of clear knowledge derived from a good foundation. For this reason, because our salvation is so dear to us, let us earnestly guard ourselves against the, form, against the fashionable Christianity of our time, which consists of nothing more than a person's going to church on Sunday and experiencing religious feelings without the underpinning of a clear knowledge of biblical truth and an intense desire to grow in it. When our Christianity is grounded on mere feelings, no error is so foolish and horrible that a cunning deceiver cannot persuade us to subscribe to it. Let us therefore strive to become ever more deeply rooted in the pure doctrine of the divine word, as by God's grace our church has it, and as it is laid down in our confessional writings and in the writings of Luther and other faithful enlightened witnesses of the truth. In this way, we will not be led away by diverse and strange teachings, but will instead receive a firm heart and a mind that is skillful enough to distinguish between the good and the evil. And so we pray. Let me be thine forever, thou faithful God and Lord. Let me forsake thee never, nor wander from thy word. Lord, do not let me waver, but give me steadfastness. And for such grace, forever, thy holy name I'll bless. Amen. And we pray together in the words of the Te Deum. We praise you, O God. We acknowledge you to be the Lord. All the earth now worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To you, cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth. Heaven and earth are full of the majesty of your glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise you. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise you. The noble army of the martyrs praise you. The holy church throughout all the world does acknowledge you, the father of an infinite majesty, your adorable true and only son. Also the Holy Ghost, the comforter. You are the king of glory, O Christ. You are the everlasting son of the father. When you took upon yourself to deliver man, you humbled yourself to be born of a virgin. When you had overcome the sharpness of death, you opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You sit at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that you will come to be our judge. We therefore pray you to help your servants whom you have redeemed with your precious blood. Make them to be numbered with your saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save your people and bless your heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify you, and we worship your name forever and ever. Grant, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, let your mercy be upon us, as our trust is in you. O Lord, in you have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.